What's up guys, it's me Lumos Theramax and today we're doing a brand new series and that series is going to be the best forgotten plots and today we're going to be focusing around some events that happened around Kyle right as uh, the end of the new Guardian series took place which is uh, honestly one of his most powerful moments uh, that he ever had in comics. That being said, be sure to sit back like and subscribe to both myself, the homies, and the coffee shop content creators down low, and enjoy the vid. So, picking up with Green Lantern New Guardians issue 40, this is kind of like the collective end of the series, as I said earlier. And we get a small recap of Kyle essentially establishing who he is, that he is like a singular White Lantern, that there is no core that is established with him, and all of his exploits of saving the universe between both Relic, uh, the end of the emotional spectrum being ran out, as well as like the idea of fighting High Father for the power of the life equation, and uh, the issue he's having with it, and like his darker half creating the idea of Oblivion, who is who just wants to delete him and replace him. And Kyle has all these allies showing up to help defend him against this dude named Oblivion. And Oblivion is wildly powerful. As I said, he's defeating like Kyle Rayner with the powers of the life equation by just like draining his life force, which is like really wacky stuff. But the collective force of everyone here is no more than kind of like an obnoxious, like they can like, kind of hold him back but they can't actually damage him which is super frustrating and this force includes like the guardians of the universe star sapphire and a, a few characters that we had come across recently in the new guardians franchise uh some that were former villains some that were former allies etc etc and all they want to do is is get kyle away from oblivion because they know what he's trying to do and honestly they're a little bit uh worried because keep in mind there's one white lantern in the multiverse and him dying like everyone's kind of unsure now that the life entity is no longer around of like what would essentially happen if he dies especially with a life equation and oblivion just is destroying everyone bro <laughs> everyone's just kind of getting their ass kicked by him and uh, until kyle starts firing back uh at oblivion oblivion didn't really manage uh like oblivion was just kind of like thrashing everyone the guardians say like hope like he's just getting stronger oblivion's just feeding on all uh, everything we're trying to do here and even kyle admits that like yo i can't i can't deal with him i can't fight him and Oblivion admits, yo, your fighting only gives me more power. I just feed on all those negative things that you're feeling whenever you're trying to fight. And he throws all of them back saying, like, he can't be stopped by whatever it is they're trying to do. Whatever lame-ass level of power that they have. And Kyle immediately wraps him up and tries to get him away from this populated area. But, unfortunately, Oblivion is formless energy. <laughs> <laughs> and just falls through the uh, the constructs and immediately kills two guardians. But Kyle, using the power of the life equation, immediately wishes them back to life, and they come back to life. But despite that, he says that they can't beat him at this point in time. That he's going to have to sacrifice himself in order in order to be comparable to like where Oblivion's at currently. Because if he deals with himself, then he deals with the idea of oblivion at the same time because oblivion is like his shadow i guess more so than anything but none of them want kyle to sacrifice himself and even oblivion essentially notes that kyle is gonna have to do it he's gonna have to make the big boy sacrifice to make this shit happen and kyle essentially begins thinking about everything here but he says yo like there's only one lantern one white lantern and that's me man and the life equation is going to destroy me unless I do something else. And Carol Ferris, Carol Ferris begins prodding him. He's like, yo, dude, so be it. You can't, you can't take absolutes at this point in time, dude. Look at you. You're an absolute, man. You're the fucking White Lantern. You can bend all of the rules. And that kind of sits, uh, like her and St. Walker's words kind of sit with him because they tell him, like, hey, change the game. And he says, change the game, change the rules. And he thinks about that for a second. And he goes to the Guardians and he says... Yo, I'm gonna link us together. And he uses a mind, it uses his telepathic uh, connection to the mind space of the Guardians and essentially says, hey, like the universe needs a White Lantern, but White Lanterns come with access to the life equation. 
and like it's going to exist there no matter what and i can't stop being the white lantern and i can't give that power to just one other person that burden is too much trust me i know so he says you guys have like done this for a long time you guys essentially have always made cores what do you think about making more like what do you think about the idea of making more white lantern rings and are making white lantern rings and he says the only way to fight nothingness which is what oblivion essentially is is to create something and so no one person should have the life equation we're going to split the equation into a variety of people create a new core with new rings each holding a bit of that power and thus like if shit gets really bad we can reunite those rings and then use the life equation but we're keeping it protected this way and together they create a bunch of rings and immediately send them out to a bunch of characters who've been throughout the new guardians uh, franchise as well as some new ones so say so uh say soran of sir Surus, uh, a character we'd come across previously gets one talahi of fifth slime seven gets one some sort of weird techno person uh mehenanash of exeter i think he was just known as exeter previously uh joins rom ganshay of the nest winds up joining telos user of daxum a daxamite who are essentially like cousins to the kryptonians get one but think about that dude like the potentially the strongest lantern uh here a daxamite with a white lantern ring and with their new form powers uh and power over life itself these six other lanterns immediately join the fray or immediately go to joining the fray against the powers of oblivion as this new twisted wicked looking construct that he had formed himself into and even oblivion is confused as to what the fuck is happening and he asks him what the hell's going on and kyle says shit i should have done a long time ago they've separated the power obviously into everything and the white lantern core rolls up in its totality and begins to start taking down uh, and just absolutely going ham on Oblivion. And Kyle even tells Carol to stay back. Yo, this is a job for the White Lantern Corps. And Kyle immediately flies straight at Oblivion and strikes him and tackles o the actual Oblivion right out of the con like the twisted construct he had made out of himself. And he looks at Oblivion holding him up by the throat and says, Yo, I split the power seven ways so that power no longer exists. He says, I, put, I split the power of the life equation, and as a result of that, Kyle's not a threat, and since he's not a threat, Oblivion is no longer a threat, and he literally just deletes him inside his hands, and says that he is nothing as a result of that. And all these other lanterns, kind he kind of explains to all these other lanterns, hey yo, make sure you keep your, your ring safe, you contain a power of a piece of the life equation within you, like don't fuck it up, make sure you're good, Go so go do good and so on. And they all just kind of fly off, kind of talking to one another, uh, all the whole core just kind of like memeing out. And Kyle in the end kind of does the exact same thing, just kind of talks to the guardians and then winds up ending. But, and winds up making out with Carol Ferris, his girlfriend at the time, and then they say they want to go home. And that's the end of his story. But yo, yo, wait a minute, what the fuck? Hold up. You're telling me, whatever happens to these guys? The whole White Lantern Corps? There's a whole White Lantern Corps. Okay, there's seven White Lanterns right now, allegedly. But we just never hear about these guys again. Bro, we have a Daxamite White Lantern running around, but like, they just disappear. Talk about one of the best forgotten plots in DC history. What happened to the White Lantern Corps? It's a big rip. It's a big rip. I would love to have had like a singular story on any of these White Lanterns or or at least a continuation to find out whatever happened to them. So I think uh, it would be very interesting to have had White Lanterns running around uh, or at least or even having like the life equation around during the idea of like death metal or something along those lines given we are like a, potentially past that level of power at that point in time but I, I think that'd be super super interesting
but tell me what you guys think down low. If this video gets 50 likes, then I'll be sure to drop another White Lantern video. So definitely give a like and subscribe to both myself and the Coffee Shop content creators. And I'll see you next time, Lanterns. Later.